So now back in with the 2B pencil and we're going to fill in, start the shading, just a tone across McGonagall's face. Now I'm using the 2B pencil but I'm also <clears throat> Putting this down a little bit darker than I would ordinarily because we have got very good contrasting lights. So whereas like with the BTS guys and Ariana Grande because the skin was so smooth and we had a very small area of highlight I actually didn't I, I went all the way over so I'm leaving carefully where the paper is fully ex uh, the highlight is fully exposed I'm leaving the paper just to leave that highlight showing as much as possible and this is where the construction lines work for us. So you can see we're filling in the nostril and then we're coming up the nose. You can see how all of that there up to that highlight is shaded in. We can just fill in again these shapes of this little triangle on the cheek. And then on the top of that lip, upper lip, the underneath of the upper lip, and then the lower lip, and then we've got coming around the chin, so we've got the shade at the bottom. And the curve coming, and again, we've got this strong highlight on this edge here, so we're just leaving that showing. And then all the rest of it, including apart from the highlight in the eye, so I'm going to fill in the eyeball and just fill in these shapes and these areas <clears throat> with the flat of the pencil underneath the eye. And already you can see Dame Maggie Smith starting to come off the page. Now, there's the back of the neck. Not coming up on the cheek and around the eye. So before I smooth this in, we can actually increase some of the shadows around it anyway. And this is really lovely. So again, we've got the dark coming underneath the hat. Got the lines coming down underneath the cheek, the side of the nose. Going up into the eye socket, we can curve that around. That's already looking really lovely. Underneath the bottom of the nose. We've got that shadow coming off. Corner of the mouth going up to the cheek. Again, this is what you can just do with, with cross hatching. You can build up the tone very quickly. That crease line going up. Again, this is all just with 
the 2B pencil. Shade in the ear. And I'm just resting my little finger on the page, off the actual, on the surface that I'm drawing on. It's allowing me to pivot backwards and forwards quite freely. And the neck, we can darken this down a bit more. And there, straight away, we've got three dimensional aspects onto McGonagall's face. Now, I'm going to come in with some kitchen roll, just fold it up, and I can just push this over onto the highlighted bits and then it just fills it, fills it in and it'll just pull the highlights off. Very quickly. Now again, all around face. I'm just smoothing it down. And I've got a really good, you can see there straight away, you've got a really good general tone. Again, bringing the tone of the eyeball down. And if I just come in with the clean putty rubber, where we've got the strongest highlights, so here going up, side of the nose, that part over on the cheek, just now dabbing. Again, I'm dabbing next to the tone rather than having a sharp line. Then we've got the highlighted bits and the creases on the forehead, little bit of dabs on the eyebrow. Underneath a right eye. You can see already we've got really lovely three dimensionality in that area. So I've just pulled the rubber up to a clean part again. We're doing right on the front, on the edge of a forehead. Again, just dabbing some highlights coming over the forehead. And then edge of the cheek, the upper part of a lower eyelid. Okay, I'm just pulling out those highlights in the pupil. Then on edge of her face coming down by her mouth and then strong bit on the chin and there you can see straight away that's Dame Maggie Smith that's McGonagall looking out at us looking rather fierce and stern in the loving way that she is top of the lip underneath, down on the lip. Again, that's very quick. And we've got that half tone shadow detail actually down and in, and that's, it just looks really, really lovely. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna come back in with the kitchen roll. And I'm just using my right hand so as I can see, otherwise my left hand. Yeah, kind of, I don't want to go onto the, there we go. 
Now, because we've got such bright on the face, we want this to stand out. I am going to use a 4B pencil. Let's just check. And we've just put in that hair quickly. But around the face, yeah, we could just go in and start doing the details. I'm just wanting to fill in some tone. It will give me a reference point as we're building up the tones in McGonagall. And then we'll make this really black with a, an 8B pencil later. But it means we can do the work building up the dark. Yeah, this is like when we put the this has gone so quick. I'm just making this decision now. Again, I don't follow a formula. You can just go, right, I'm going to do the eyes and then I'm going to do the nose I'm going to do, and you can build the detail out. It's a complete choice as you develop your skills. But to get these techniques and these tones down so that you guys can see quickly, having some tonal contrast next to the area we're working on on the face is actually very good. So this is the hair by the back of a collar. Coming up, and this is this is like the brim underneath the hat. So again, I'm just filling this in quickly. And you can see already that the face is now starting because of the, the darkness of the tone that we've put in. McGonagall's face is already starting to look thinner, not as three-dimensional. And I'm using the soft flat side of the pencil. Just pressing on enough to give me some tone so again coming over the hat now. This is all going to be very, very dark a little bit later. And then the lighter tones, in fact, we can bring that dark over and around. Just filling in the brim. Kind of knitted band around the base of a hat. And then we've got the tall part of her witch's hat going up. I did hear something from history uh, quite interesting about the witch's hat actually. And the people who used to wear pointed hats that became the witch's hat, apparently, again, check out verified uh, historical information yourself. Do not believe everything that you hear or read on the internet. Do what is called due diligence to go and find out. And it was ladies in towns and villages who used to brew beer for the locals. And so the brew masters, or, well, not brew masters, the brew ladies, the brewer experts were ladies at the time 
and you spotted them through a crowd because of the pointed hat and you went and got your beer so again you can see that's now framing off uh, McGonagall but eventually men figured out that they liked beer so much and they could make money from it that they took over doing, doing beer and the brew ladies with the tall pointed hats somehow it then got associated with witches which I find rather fascinating so now the top collar coming down underneath McGonagall's head and neck area we can just indicate that in quickly and this is why you need to be careful this is why you use a piece of paper otherwise you're going to put your hand on there you're just going to keep on smudging it and your hand will get filthy I say I'm balancing my left hand on top of my right hand while I'm just filling this fast area in now And that's looking rather good. Again, just bringing some down. Again, there's no real highlights on this, so we may as well quickly. Filling in a nice kind of mid tone. And this area is going to be darker, and this area is going to be darker still. But dark coming down there. And again, we can dark, this will get darkened down a lot later. You can see now McGonagall's face has kind of become thinner inside. And this is another reason why I don't just follow a formula. You just do what works. You follow a progression. You learn skills and techniques that will allow you to produce your drawings to the best of your ability. And you just respond to the drawing as you go along. And it's just a case of building up layers. So now I've filled all of that in. I'm just going to do the same now. I'm just smoothing that pencil down so that, I mean you can see that's really dirty already. You're actually pulling some of the pencil off. It means you've got no bright area of the paper showing through. Again, that's the kind of velvety fabric on the front of a blouse or dress. Looks really, really lovely. So there already you can see we've got quite a dynamic picture of McGonagall starting to come together. Now, back in with a 4B pencil, and what I am going to do is, like I've done this, <clears throat> again, I would do this later, but because of this strong highlight here, I want some background tone. Now we did this on Luna. Uh, we actually filled in the background like we did the full black uh, of 
behind Voldemort, the Dark Lord. So, while we're doing this, it's just wise to fill in. So again, I'm using the flat of the 4B pencil. I'm not going quite to the full edge of the paper. And then here, we just need to be careful as we're coming up to McGonagall's face. So it doesn't matter when, when you're going over the hat. But when you come to the face, just be careful. Again, we'll pull out the highlights using the putty rubber, but it means we can do the shading quite quickly. But already now, I mean, just look at that. McGonagall is starting to leap off the page because that highlight is the paper. So we've darkened the paper down and it makes a stand out. And this is what's going to build our drawing up a little bit. So again, I'm still using the flat of the pencil, not really twisting it over. Now, we've got darker tone coming out by the side of the heart, a bit darker up there. You know, this is all out of focus fuzziness in the background. And you can do, you can either try and copy exactly what is in the photo, or you can just kind of indicate some wispy smoky bits. It's up to you. But again, this is the joy of drawing. Again, I'm not really copying what's going on down there. That's lighter behind the neck, and so it, it's just down to you. Now again, you can see how dirty that is. I actually want a cleaner part because I want tone to be just the pencil that's on the paper. Again, I've just been very careful going right next to McGonagall's face. Again, yes, I am using the opposite hand I normally use. Just have a go. And that means that you're not, like here now, it doesn't matter about going over the shoulder because we'll pull that off a little bit later with the detail and we can go over the heart. I'm going to the edge. Again, you can see I can just soften that right up to the heart and it doesn't matter because when we crisp up the heart later, it will completely stand out. Again now, by the back of the hat, you can go over the back of the neck. And there you can see now already, we've got absolutely fantastic image started to look like McGonagall. Now we could have worked a lot more on the face and then added this after, but this just gives us more to work with. So again, I'm just darkening this tone down by a chin and up the side of a face. And it just makes the highlights stand out better. So you can see that fuzzy bit there is really working well for us. So that's rather good. I'm rather pleased with that. Again, this is getting really filthy. So we might need a clean section of that in a bit. But there you can see we've got a really lovely image coming together of McGonagall. So now Coming back in with the 2B pencil, just sharpen it, 
I need this paper so that I don't smudge. And we're going to start, and we're going to start detailing up around her eyes. So again, I'm now, we've got coming across the eye here from where the edge of her eyelashes are coming out. Just indicate the eyelashes a bit more. We've got this dark line that comes across, but it's causing a shadow that's coming over. We want to take that down to the tear duct. It's nice and red, so it's dark here, but lighter here. So don't press on too hard. Edge of the tear duct. That vein in her eye. Lower part of the eyeball. Just a little bit of shadow at the bottom top we need to just darken that eyeball down. And the iris again I'm being very careful to leave that little highlight. And then we've got a lovely lighter tone in her iris coming around. And a little shape there that I'm leaving. A little Flex. Now I'm going to try, there we go, I'm just softening the edge of that iris off. I'm going to come in with the dirty putty rubber. And just pull up that little highlight in the eye. Now, this is the 4B pencil. I'm just pressing in where the dark is of the pupil. And already you can see that I, compared to everything else, is now starting to really lift off the page. Now we could work all around that eye there. And I'm just using the 4B pencil, just softening that top bit dark right on the edge of the iris. Again I'm just using the soft tip and then just you can see already that's just framing that edge. I'm coming back in with a 2B pencil just so as it's, it's you've got a little bit more control because it's not so soft. We can just gently crisp up that edge of a face coming down. Now if we do the same on McGonagall's right eye so again, we've got the curve coming over, which is darker with her eyelashes. So again, I'm just softening it up and down, just kind of slightly fuzzing it caused by her eyelashes. And again, there's doing the same on this side, just fuzzing it a little bit. And then the edge of the iris. Again, soft and fuzzy. I'm not pressing on hard and sharp. I'm not twisting the pencil because I want that softer, dark outer line of her iris. And then darkening the pupil down up to the highlight above.
and then the upper part of the iris is a little bit darker because of the eye. Then we can just darken that tone down. Again, soften the edges carefully. And we just leave that highlight showing. And already now you can see we've got McGonagall's eye just lifting off. Again, not as dark, we want the tear duct shape right next to the eye, softening that shadow next to it. And then we've got creases that are coming right over. So we've got this fantastic dark crease again, just being soft as that creates the shape of putting the lines in that we need. Like we've got that one there, we've got a number of lines on the right side and then this. Remember we drew the D shape earlier. This comes all the way around. And it's just nice soft shapes. This is how versatile the 2B pencil is. And we've got this darker shape off the back of her eye. Coming off into the corner of her eye socket. And that darker tone goes up to that curve that's going over and above. And underneath the highlighted part of a lower eyelid we've got that darker shape. And already you can see we've, we're getting the line and the form of her eye standing out. Inside the lower eyelid right next to the eyeball and then on the right hand side of her eyeball because it's curved it's brighter here than it is here. You can have more shade underneath the upper eyelid. Again darken this side down, the lower eyelid coming up to where the tear duct is. I'm basically just cross hatching but softly and gently. I'm not pressing on to get a dark dug in shape, a uh, sharp line. Again, just building that up around the tear duct. Curve of her upper eyelid. It's fantastic how this comes down. Soften that darker part. We've got this little shape, this kind of little leaf shape underneath the eyebrow. So the eyebrow comes up and then goes over very thin and slow. And then we want dark in that crease coming out to the light, just allowing the transition to just soften out towards the highlight. Then we've got this crease going up the forehead. 
and you can see where you see the nose comes around and then the curve you can see we've got this curve that comes over and you can follow the trajectory of the to the top of the right eye and then we've got this crease that comes up and one off her eyebrow and already you can see we're getting more definition on McGonagall's eyes building up the tone slowly so again just bringing the dark over a little bit to that slightly highlighted bit so now a right eyebrow I'm drawing in the direction that the eyebrows would grow and that's what makes it that little bit more real but there's not a lot of defining lines because they're just kind of very shaded in because of the shadow and the intensity of the light you can see that we've got it's much lighter underneath so that's kind of a bit stark that eyebrow is above but if we just fill in some of the shade there and there's a bit of shade coming down just darken above it see the eyebrow just then starts to become part of McGonagall's face so now I want to build a little bit of tone down around underneath the eye down the side of the nose so we're doing the shade now right on the bottom of the nose and the nostrils we've got the C shape first and then we've got you can see here there's like a D of shade or it's like a sail on a little sailing boat at the front you've got this little shark fin really there no, that's a of shade that comes down and then curves underneath and that goes up so the bit on a forehead and again just doing this kind of cross hatching on top of the bit that you smoothed you can see it's just really starting to give us more three-dimensionality again so when we put all the dark around the face it really just made this look very thin and pale and this is what you do you just take your time and build the tone up now again I've got no solid line here your brain is going to make up the edge of the nose and this is just a trick of drawing And you let the highlight do the work for you. That's going up onto a forehead. Just join sort of that tone up. That's looking really, really lovely. So now we've got the shade underneath the nose. Again, I'm just softening the edges so as we, you know, we've not got too many crisp edges. Again, coming down, following the, the direction that we did with this kind of shark fin. Just a little bit more 
shade coming down to the cheek. And then by the lips. Again, the crease on the cheek. On the left hand side. And then we've got a tiny little bit. Going off to the edge there. Again, now I can see I've got crease lines in a forehead. I'm just indicating those in and going up over the forehead and over the left eye. And we've got this kind of, it's a bit like a butterfly, but if you think of a W there, there's a head there. That's just some shade. Then obviously it needs to be darker up at the top. Now you can see Professor McGonagall really starting to look out of the page at us. You boy, Potter. Not really good at Scottish, female Scottish accents especially. So darken the side of the nose down. But you can imagine, you know, Weasley, you know, having a go yelling at them all and trying to bring them into line. Again some shadow coming off the nose, coming down above the cheek. And this is where we'll work with the putty rubber to bring in the detail. So I will pull out on these creases, they'll, they'll pull them out and make them much sharper. Now I'm going to come in with the 4B pencil and just put in the dark inside her right nostril. And that little curved shape. But again I'm softening the edge and that will literally make a nose stand out. And that's how simple it is. So if we now do the same darkening the upper lip down, she's got some reflected highlights in there so I'm just putting a bit of a mid-tone in. This is the 2B pencil. And then we can really bring that dark center line across. And then just draw some of the lines on. Again, soft at the top. That's the shape of her lips being pursed and thin. We've got the crease lines in the lower lip. Where we've got the lipstick. And it's lighter on the bottom of the pot from up on this corner here. So we can just bring that over. And leave the highlight on the right hand left hand side. Right hand side of the paper, I was about to say, as I'm looking at it. But again, already now you can see her lips are really lifting the drawing off for us. Shadow underneath. As that goes across the side and we've got the corner of the mouth how it the shadow goes down and then you've got a little crease line next to it. And then on the corner of a cheek you can see how the angle comes off here where it cuts across and you've just got a little bit of 
line showing in. We'll just indicate some creases in the light on that side. Again, we'll lift that out again with the putty rubber. Now, curve underneath the nostril. And this is the 2B pencil, so it's not too dark. Going right underneath. And then quickly the bottom of a chin. Again, we've got a strong line coming off the side of the mouth. So I'm just softening the edge of a mouth. We've got that triangle crease coming down from the mouth, line coming off, one above. And there's just some wiggly crease coming out. We've got this very strong one here. It's coming off and across. And now I'm just building up that shadow at the bottom. Again, you've got the C shape coming around the chin. And you just keep looking and you're building the tone up and it's you can see this highlighted bit here just coming through and the cheek coming down the tone on the cheek coming down to the jaw we're just building this up quickly just to darken a lot of the tone down again it's soft the pencil is soft so I'm getting a nice blurred line especially going up to the ear that shadow underneath the ear and I can darken the neck down and I can still see the detail of the line that I need now again I'm now just fully cross hatching in the right hand side of her face and over her ear. It's going to go darker still. Indicating in that C point area. And there we have McGonagall really starting to look off the page. I hope you're having fun with this because I'm really enjoying it. <laughs>